Hey, welcome to this new lecture. And in this lecture, we will be using OpenCV to capture video from the computer webcam. So you'll need OpenCV and you will import it as CV2, as you already know. Uh, OpenCV is what we use for image processing and of course video processing, because video is made of images. So we have lots of images and they are re referred to as frames. And uh, these frames, they, these images are showing one after the other in a high speed and then we can see those images as a video. And you'll either hate this lecture or love it. What we'll be doing is that we will go in a, in a really low level of image processing here, of video processing. Uh, we'll be reading frames one by one, so images one by one. And you'll see that how we use loops in Python to show those images and to actually build a window where images are, are showing fast and you can see it as a video. So if you have a laptop, you probably have a built-in camera. If you have a desktop without a camera, you'll need an uh, external camera to follow me in this lecture. And now the first thing you may want to do is to read a video. And then once you read a video, so you can read a video uh, either from the webcam or from a video file. And once you read the video, then you can apply other operations, uh, such as graying out the video or adding text uh, to the video or detecting objects in the video, etc. So the first thing you want to do is to create an object, let's say video, and that would be equal to cv2.video capture. So that's the method that triggers a video capture object. And that gets an argument here, uh, which can be either a number such as 0, 1, 2, 3, or the video file path. So when you put a number, that uh, implies that you're capturing video from the camera. So let's say uh, I have a built-in camera in my computer, but also have uh, an external camera. In that case, one of my cameras will have an index of 0, and the other camera will have an index of 1, and if I have a third camera, it will have an index of 2, and so on. So that's it. If you had a video file, you could just say movie.mp4 or something like that. It depends on your video file name. And you'd have to have this uh, file somewhere in your computer. But in this lecture, we are talking about capturing video from the webcam. So I have only one webcam in my computer, so I'll pass a zero here. That's it. Once you do that, you want to make sure that you will release the camera. So you want to access your object, video.release is the method. And then you don't need to pass any arguments there. So let's see what we have if we execute this this Python file. So python capture.py is the name of my file. And obviously nothing happens. But on my side, I, I noticed that my camera w was turned on for for a second, or for, for for a fraction of a second. So the light of the camera was turned on, and then it was closed. It was turned off immediately. So what happens is that we actually trigger the camera here, the webcam, but then we immediately release the camera. So what Python will do is it will open the camera, and in a millisecond or so, it will release the camera. Let me try it again. Sometimes it might happen that you don't even see a light at all. So you don't see it because the process happens very fast. So probably your computer needs some seconds to actually turn on the light of your camera. And we can give it some seconds. So To do that, you want to import the built-in time library. The time library provides some operations related to time. And uh, so, for example, in our case, we will use it to hold the script for three seconds. <laughs> so, what this will do is that Python will try to execute the script line by line, so it will import CV2 and time, and then it will trigger the camera, and then before releasing the camera, we will have the script wait for three seconds. So this will be executed, wait for three seconds, and then execute the other method. That's it. Now, 
Let me execute this again. Okay, the light is on. One, two, three, off. Yep. And the video is released. Now, maybe you're thinking, why don't we see your face there <laughs> showing up in the video camera in the window? Well, the reason is that, do you see any line here that I'm showing a window? No. So why do you expect my face to show there? <laughs> And the way we do that is by first creating a frame object which will read the images of this video capture object. And let me do that first before going into more explanations. So let me say check frame. That would be equal to video dot read. Just like that. So what we are reading here is we have a boolean data type here and an numpy array. So let me print this out so that you understand better. So check first and then print frame. Okay, execute the script. Okay, wait for three seconds and close it. So what we got here is I'll expand this. So we got true for the check variable and we got the numpy array which represents the image. And this image is actually the first image that the video captures. And this here, the, the boolean, we can use it for various operations such as checking whether the video is running or not. So you may have to, to check that while doing your programs. And the frame is the most important one because we will use this frame object, so we'll use this numpy array, uh, which is a three-dimensional array because it's a color image, so it has three bands. And you know this from the previous lectures where, where we did uh, image processing. Okay, and we will uh, loop through this frame and show it using uh, the image show method, so I'm show, uh, image show method of the CV2 library. So we will recursively show each frame of the video being captured. So I hope that makes sense. So before we do that recursively, uh, I would like to show a window down here. So CV2, I'm show, and let's put a name for the window capturing and then pass the frame object in there. And also remember that when you pass uh, an uh, image show method, so when you're showing a window, you want to make sure that the window is closed. And you do that using the cv2.wait key method. And you can pass zero to, to allow you to press any button and close that window. And what you want to do is cv2 destroy all windows. So when this button is pressed, you destroy all windows. And actually you want to put this up here so the video is not released before you press this key. So what happens is that Python executes these lines and then it waits for you to press a key and then it releases the video and then it, it destroys the actual window that you're seeing on the screen. Okay, let's see what will happen now. Surprise, uh, I've got only two teeth. You didn't know that. Okay, I'm joking, I, I have more. But, <laughs> uh, so what Python had did here is that it triggered the camera. So, it triggered the camera here. And then it read the first frame of the video. So the very first frame, as soon as the camera triggers, it reads the first frame and then we printed out that frame and it's here somewhere in the command line. And then the script slept for three seconds, so it didn't do anything. It waited for three seconds and then CV2 with the I'm show method, it created a window uh, where it showed the first frame of the video. So the picture that you just saw is the first frame of the video. And then the, the actual frame the window is still open so it, it's waiting for a key for us to press so if i press a key now these last two lines will be executed 
So that means uh, the video will be released and this uh, window will destroy. So press key and yeah, that happened. So Python is processing a video frame just as simple images. That means you can also apply methods such as cv2.cvt color and you can pass that frame in here and then cv2 color bgr2 gray save it in a gray variable so what i'm doing is that i'm converting the frame so the color frame into a gray image and actually i have to do this uh, up here so and then i can show the grayscale version of the image here okay let me try it again so that's the grayscale version that is showing using I'm show method. So that's the idea. Now, how about showing an, an actual video, not an, a single image there? Uh, well, the answer is that we need to use a while loop here. Uh, the reason we need to do that is that uh, a while loop, what it does is that it executes some statements infinitely until you break the loop at a certain point using statements such as break, for example. So the idea is that we need to put all this code up to here. So we need to put it in a while loop. And I'll do just that. So you can either use a shortcut from your keyboard, depending on your keyboard, or go to edit lines and then indent to indent these lines. So here is a shortcut. But anyway, and then you want to write while true and then everything goes inside the while loop. As easy as that. Uh, but we haven't finished yet. Uh, we have some more things to do here. But first of all, I'd like to actually make sure you understand the while loop. So let me trigger a Python console here quickly. So what while loop does is that, let's say while true, print, mm, let's say one. If you execute that now, one will be printed infinitely. So my console is getting very busy here and I can interrupt this using a keyboard interruption operation. So control C or control Z if that doesn't work. So the while loop is saying while true, which will be always true, execute these lines. But if I try to run this now, what will happen is that Python will trigger the capture, the video capture, and it will show the window. But it's just one window only, so just an image is the first image of the video. Uh, because what what's happening is that the while loop starts, but it goes, it creates a frame, the first frame of the video. So the current frame, which is the very first frame where the video starts. And then it converts the frame to a grayscale image. And then it sleeps for three seconds. Okay. And then it shows the image. And then what the while loop does here, it waits for you to press a key. And then if you press a key, the process stops. So what you can do in this case is to enter another, let me make some space there. Uh, so you need to alter this value here, so the arguments. When we enter zero, it means that any key that you press on the keyboard, it will close that uh, window. But if you enter, let's say 2000, that means the script will wait for 2000 milliseconds, which is two seconds. And let's see what will happen here. So it shows my face first, and then it waits for three seconds here, then it waits for another two seconds, <laughs> and then it shows the other frame, so it's very slow, just like that. Okay. Now if you press any key, nothing will happen because you remove the zero from here. So in that case I'll forcefully stop the script here, Control c Okay, we don't need this uh, time sleep anymore. And we also need a conditional here. 
And before doing that, we'll store this action in a key variable. And then we say if key is equal to or the method, and then you pass a key from the keyboard. So if this equals Q, then break the while loop. And let's put it 1000 this time. Okay. So now what this will do is that it will capture the video, it will start the video, and then it will iterate through all these lines. So it will create a frame, convert it to gray, and then show the frame here. And then it will wait for one second. And if you press the Q key from the keyboard, it will break the while loop. And then if you if it breaks and the video dot release will be executed so the video will stop and the window will be destroyed but if you don't press any key uh, this will wait for one second and then it will show the next frame and then after one second it will show the next frame so and so on so uh, save the script execute so the video is improving yeah looks good now okay if you press Q, you'll stop it. Okay, let's improve it more. Why not one milliseconds? Hey, how are we doing? So, it's working good. And you can also see here that the check boolean and the numpy array is being printed at every iteration. And we can stop this now if we press Q. Just like that. Now, if you want to know how many frames are being generated there, there is a nice trick we could do. We could create a variable, let's say a equals to one, outside the while loop. And then here you say a equals to a plus one. And then after the loop breaks here, you want to print a. So what this will do is, uh, when you run the script, A gets a value of 1, and then um, when the while loop starts running, so it will go th through the first iteration, and it will increase A value by 1, so A equals to 1 plus 1, so it will be 2, so A will be updated to 2, and then it will go up to the end, and then it will start up again. So this time it will be a again equals to 2 plus 1, so a will be 3 at the second iteration, and so on. Or you can put this to 1 actually. So if we have two iterations, that means a will be 2, and if we have 3, it will be 3, and so on. And then we print a here outside the loop. Okay, and let's see what we have. I'll keep the video running for 3 seconds, and we'll see how many iterations we'll have. So capture, one, two, three, and stop. So the last value that was printed out here is a value. Now that means we had 51 iterations in about three seconds, which is, let's say, around 20 frames per second. So our camera, my camera, is capturing 20 frames per second. And let me execute this so one more time, the last time. So if I put my finger here in the camera, so I blacked out the image and you see that the NumPy array is now 0, 0, 0. Uh, because the frames of the image, all it has is 0 values. So there's 0 intensity in the image. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you in this lecture. So as I said, uh, once you have these frames, you can apply operations to, to them. So you can draw rectangles there, detect images and so on. And we will do that, so we will build our real world application by implementing some uh, motion detection in our frames. And then we will capture the times that an object enter our frame, our video. And we will have a list of those times. So I hope you loved this lecture, not hated it. And I'll see you in the next one.